I uh, just messaged Kriana. I asked her if she had an ETA. She's like, I don't. Just go on without me. She has a lot of just random stuff she has to do, but she's going to say she's going to join hopefully soon. Mm. So let's just start things off, and she'll hop in when she hops in. Yeah. Um, All right. Just ignore the bottom left corner of the screen. That's that's just uh, we took an x-ray of, um, of our good friend Lee. Just what he kind of looks like under the. Uh... <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> ah. I see what you did there. I'm like, what the fuck is on the bottom That's left hand? That's what he of looks like screen, on the inside. Really? He's a Ugh. robo demon? What a twist! <laughs> I didn't even know. Wait a second. All right. It all makes <clears throat> sense now. Do we have some art to show people? Oh my god, I have no idea. I will go and get some. <laughs> we have picture of Leon, and we have Kenzie's picture with Tiny Raf. Ooh, I'm gonna did, go see. Did we already show the Tom being drugged and yes. kidnapped? Yeah, we did that yeah. last week. Then yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, so let's see. Uh, Kenzie's thing and Kriana's thing. Leon. Leon. The unicorn that she loves. Yes. All right, this is going to be pretty messy because I did not set up for this. Oopsie poopsie. Uh, let me, oh, yep, bad. That's fine. That's good. Uh, <laughs> that, that didn't work very well. <laughs> okay, well, then let's we don't go. worry about it. People who are listening, go to Twitter if, well, if you want to and look at art. There. All right. Um, Solved it for you. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> there we go. Oh, you. Okay, you figured something out. So uh, there's uh, there's Mackenzie's uh, drawing on the Twitter sphere, and uh, <laughs> there is <laughs> there's he Trana's. strikes fear into anyone, or maybe he's just fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's the uh, good old Leon uh, unicorn. I'm so mm -hmm. caught off guard. So embarrassed. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's all good. Cool. Thank you, Mackenzie and Krana. Well, thank you, Krana, <laughs> who will join us shortly when she's done doing her thing. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> so, um, let's get started. Before I, I, I begin, renew the campaign, um, is there anything you guys wanted to ask me about the game world or any sort of rule clarifications or anything like that? Or are we good to go? Mm, I'm good. I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay, Piffy. All right, great. So when we last left off, um, Omar... Uh, the red-headed individual who you uh, encountered on the road here in the eastern section of what used to be the American Empire. Uh, you encountered him, and he was under some serious medical distress. His appendix uh, nearly burst, but thanks to the quick actions of the group, uh, he, his blood was saved from that uh, really bad toxicity. His life was saved. And after some... Strange remarks and an invitation to see uh, the leader of uh, some sort of community that he's a part of. Uh, you followed him for a few days. Uh, he led you. Uh, after healing up a little bit, he led you towards this particular area that you're in. Uh, before you did, of course, uh, you came across in the ruins of a city um, a very unique unicorn um, who warned you uh, about Splagorth, and uh, begrudgingly gave Mila a bit of a um, horsey ride, <laughs> <laughs> for lack of a better word. Yay! But soon you came to this scrubland, in which where Omar asked you to stay where you were so he could give advance notice to these people that he was with. Uh, he said he would be back the next day or, or two at the absolute latest. And with that, he left you here in this um, this area, this region. While you were waiting for Omar, um, your radar, your long-range radar, did pick up a few signals in the sky. Um, 
they were just small blips that seemed to be moving in a somewhat random but slightly southern pattern you you deciphered or you know decided uh, on the pattern and it wasn't until uh, very recently only a few moment, minutes ago that Tom uh, actually got a visual contact a very brief visual, visual contact it was black and it was definitely some sort of power armor due to his past experiences with the coalition he was able to identify it as Samus power armor but no other specific indicators were given. And here we uh, resume the campaign. So, do we have a, a somewhat in-character or out-of-character consensus on what to do now? I would probably say... I... Uh, in out-of-character... Um, I would probably want to uh, go forward with the uh, uh, locating and unscrambling any sort of messages that can be found across yeah. the radio waves. That's right. Sorry, say that again. I uh, I was distracted. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so <laughs> shitty. I'm so <laughs> shitty. GM, focus on your own fucking game. So, um, uh. I, I would probably like to step forward with the um, the finding, locating, and maybe unscrambling radio waves just to see if there's anything. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. I'm just trying to figure out the range of your... Now, what radio are you using? The one on the behemoth? Um, usually, um, any sort of radio waves... Uh, Picking up radio waves should be fairly easy as long as it crosses us. Um, but yes, a larger antennae would probably be better, so uh, hooking yeah. it up to the behemoth would probably be best. <laughs> and so I, okay, so it is going to be with the behemoth. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. One Squ second. Squee, are you up for this? I am all for it, yes. All right, cool. Okay. So okay. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was just making sure our sensor turrets are fine. Our left turret sustained a little bit of damage, mm -hmm. but our right turret is at maximum. So in, in case you need that information, there you go. Groovy. Uh, all right. So I have to just quickly look up here real quick um, because there are definitely some encrypted radio channels, uh, which is no big surprise. Uh, many frequencies uh, are used encryption. Uh, in fact, the own the, the channel that you guys use have has some minor encryption on it as well. So, uh, since you explicitly say Patrick wanted to decrypt some uh, some possible channels, I just need to see exactly what skill and how difficult such thing would be. So, just looking that up real quick. All right. Oh, um, I know I mentioned this last time. It might have been some. I, I didn't mention it now. I probably should. Um, I am also asking um, August for help for this. Gotcha. So, do you have radio scramblers, Patrick? Uh, I have radio basic. Um, uh -huh. I also have um, computer hack. You're probably not. Nope. Um, Cryptology, maybe. Cryptology helps you with recognizing, designing, and cracking secret codes and messages. So if you had a message that seemed to be a bunch of jumbled mess, a bunch of letters, or even code words like, the monkey loves bananas at midnight, uh, perhaps you could determine what that is. Mm -hmm. Specifically for scrambled radio signals, though, encrypted radio signals, mm -hmm. it does require the specific radio scrambler skill does say it's the training and the use of electronic masking, scrambling, and unscrambling equipment. Right. And codes to help foil the detection, interception, interpretation of radio transmissions, right? Mm -hmm. So someone's scrambling uh, a signal, uh, you definitely want to have someone who's good at that. Now, mm -hmm. although you don't have that particular skill, August certainly does. I also know uh, somebody else who does, I believe. Yes, but we can't. I'd, I'd, I'd right. rather not NPC her. Uh, 
since she's going to be along shortly anyway. Sure. So, okay. Uh, besides, um, uh, August, uh, it takes time to unscramble, unscramble something, right? This is not instantaneous. Sure. So he starts uh, working on the channels, the channels that you are flipping through, the bands that you are flipping through to try to pick up some signals, uh, various stuff. A few of them seem to be just um, messages on repeat, uh, typically for other adventurers, other names that you do not recognize. Some of them are open trade uh, radio um, signals, uh, radio bands that local tradespersons, tradespeople use to communicate. Um, and, uh, and, and very similar other stuff. Suffice to say, you, you, you cycle through the tr radio transmissions and don't find anything of any real interest. Uh, much of the time, it's just dead silence with a few responses from time to time. So, um, as far as the encryption goes, um, August mentions that he's been able to pin down about three signals. Two of them are extremely high encryption. He assumes probably military grade, which would take some time to crack. One of them is not military grade, um, a little sloppy, in fact. Uh, it would be a lot easier for, for him to break that. Um, so uh, he asks, where shall I spend my talents? on uh, one of the military encrypted ones or uh, this amateur right here he says pointing to the current encrypted band that he's on we probably want to look for if this is um, uh, coalition we probably want to hit the uh, higher <sighs> okay he says and he starts working on it and now I roll Okay. So, uh, August uh, starts fiddling with it, starts, not really fiddling with it, but starts doing his thing, picking up, isolating certain radio waves, um, downloading them or feeding them through his, his personal computer and otherwise um, doing his best to try to piece out this encryption to, to tease it out, all right? And uh, as he starts working, he says, oh, this will take some time. This is no piece of cake. There's a lot of uh, checks and double checks and false flags and dead zones at my top. I'm making okay progress for now, but it'll be about an hour before I break through completely. Fingers crossed. Um, Patrick will nod, sitting uh, beside him. Okay. Anything Al's else you guys going... like to do? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Squee. I was just going to say, Al's going to put on, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the power armor with everything except the gloves and the helmet so that he can still operate things and uh, basically keep an eye on the sensory equipment. Okay, great. Um, I think I'll I'll pull on the mystic power armor just in case, and, and I'll chill at the observation deck. Okay. All right. Great. Um, I'll fast forward time a little bit here. Obviously. Uh, about, say about, well, we'll be specific actually, about 56 minutes in, ooh, uh, August is nearly done cracking the first signal, and already, uh, Patrick, you're able to hear a few small, um, small bits of auditory information, right? The most notable would be a gruff, low, smoky voice that would say, uh, confirm position. 
and other such phrases such as give me an estimated time scout recon and and so and so forth uh, they it seems to be a single uh, most radio communications of course are a two-way street it's individuals communicating with each other but this one seems to be just barking out orders it's just that single voice um Al, you notice yes. on the sensors, um, about 10 miles out, you see five blips. They seem to be moving in your general direction, but not directly towards you, but definitely in your general direction. They seem to be going at, actually, roll me a uh, read sensory equipment check please no penalties okay give me one second sure what the come on phone you can do it <laughs> Bleep, I blue. yep would you like to make a call uh, succeeded by 69 okay excellent you were able to very very quickly analyze the information that you get they're relatively small probably around man sized or slightly greater but the signal that they give is very reminiscent of a lot of either man sized robots or power armor okay uh, due to the speed in which they're heading and you know in that direction seven miles south of you uh, there is uh, a manner of um, there is a bit of a tree line about five miles out all right. But you know, uh, obviously, the speed that they're moving uh, and the fact that you can still, st still pick them up implies that they are flying. And you know, they're going approximately cruising speed. Uh, by the way, by how fast uh, the blips are traveling, you're able to estimate they're probably going around 150 to 200 miles per hour. And if they continue upon their trajectory, they will be within visual range in probably about 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. Um, I would relay this information to everyone else and say, if we're going to do something, we better do it fast. As everyone is paralyzed with silence. No, just yeah. kidding. Uh... I guess Patrick would probably say back, I'm going to have to go with my hunch. I'm going to say they're probably not after us. Any hostile action will probably draw more attention than we want. Al nods in agreement. Uh, would, would this be over the... I'm uh, doing it over the radio. Yes, I'm with yes. the... Yeah. Good August, old. yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, then I would say, yeah, I think the best option would be to just lie and wait. And see what happens. Okay. Um, is 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 uh, is August and Patrick? Are you in the cockpit with me, or are you somewhere? No, else? they're a little or... bit further away. Um, August is set up to, by um, the kitchen living area, using the table there for his equipment. Okay. So, sure enough, these individuals get within visual range. Tom from the observation area and Al it's a bit of a stretch uh, for you to look down uh, the south side of you because it's coming along your flank uh, I guess I should say the left flank of the behemoth and Patrick you're able to make out a, a, a few of these dots outside one of the, the the side windows of the behemoth five dots dot the horizon as they uh, start to um, come towards you Al, your sen the radar sensory um, systems show that they have not increased speed and they're continuing with this cruising velocity towards you. In addition, um, I would say Al for sure would know this. Tom would very probably know this due to previous interactions. And Patrick, whether you know this or not, I'll leave it up to your character. 
Hmm. But uh, this is definitely within weapons range of a Samus. And the very fact that they didn't open fire uh, does imply something at the very least. As these five figures get closer and closer. Uh, once they get approximately 700 feet, those with any sort of enhanced vision would notice um, the shining black armor in the sun does seem to have the white skulls and identification numbers of the coalition. Once they get within 500 feet, they hover where they are stationary for a moment, only hovering, I'll say, about 20 feet above the ground. At this distance, Al, you are able to get a clear indication of the call numbers. Roll me a D100, please. Okay. Give me one second again. Nope. Too late. You all die. <gasps> the end. <sighs> dun dun. Oh, Damn it. No. No. All right. The exact squad or a group that these individuals are in do, does not immediately come to your memory. Soon, barely heard um, through the walls and the view screen of the behemoth, you can hear um, the enhanced voice of one member in this power armor speaking through the loudspeaker. And it's a female voice, uh, low, um, husky, I guess you could say, that says, unidentified behemoth, please tune in to channel 142.93 and identify yourself. All right. Um... Al would uh, go over the intercom and he said, and he would say, um, "I'm gonna try and play it off, guys." Yep. Right. And then he would tune into that radio frequency. Okay. What do you say? Uh, yes, uh, co co coalition um, uh, flyer. This is uh, a small research group out of Greencastle. We're here uh, ex examining a rare breed of glass, grass, elephant grass, that normally is native to this floor, but it's, it's dying out, and we're trying to find out why. Is there, is there a problem? No, no, no problem at all. Voice is a male voice, which all of you who've listened into this radio frequency recognize for five months I've been listening to recordings memorizing every single bit of tone and timbre to your voice I am very glad I found you Castle speaks Nathan Heathcote you can't see me you can't see my face but I want you to know that I am grinning right now I am smiling so much that my cheeks hurt. And with that, the frontmost individual in Samus Power Armor lowers to the ground while the others follow suit behind him. And you can see um, that he's rooting for something. I, oh boy. I have been obsessed one might say, and I almost gave up. Thankfully, thankfully, a certain lost coalition patrol w was inconsistent in their report and other further questioning and, assu and assuring them they would not be court-martialed. They gave the descriptions of a few individuals that set up a few flags for me. I must admit, I don't know if I was so desperate as to hope, but now that I see this behemoth and I hear your voice, I finally can do what I've always wanted. But before I do, 
I want you to know why I found you. I want your last moments to understand what betrayal is. And with that, he finally emer uh, um, retrieves a scrappy piece of paper and he reads it in the sarcastically bubbly tone. Dear Norton Big Hat, today I saw a bird. Hope you are good. XXOO. And there's about three dozen little fucking hearts around this. I got this message five and a half months ago. I had no idea what it was. I assumed it was misplaced, just the wrong delivery, until I got another one, and another one, and another one over the months. I had lost your trail. Everyone I questioned gave me everything they could, or so I thought. And when you reemerged at Parents Post, I thought I finally found you, but it turns out that the screaming banshees weren't worth their reputation. This lizard mage that people witnessed that you even mentioned to me in New Laszlo led me nowhere. But I kept getting these messages. I had no idea what to make of them. And desperate, I decided to at least follow the source. People who carry mail and other messages, they live a very hazardous, hazardous life and they don't really have the best memories. All I really had tracing them back was that you were in a 200, 300 mile area somewhere here along this eastern coast. But it was old data. I had no clue. I just had at least an idea of where to cast my eyes. And then few days ago, looks like I got my break. You're all going to die, but before you do, there's one last bit of information that I just need to know. There's no reason why I should be communicating to you right now. I should, we should have just launched a surprise attack, but Castle I just need to know who the better person is, who the better fighter is, who the better agent is. So, this is my proposal. My men will back off. We'll back off a mile and they'll back off one further. Give us enough time and enough space so we can fight each other man on man, head to head, toe to toe. And if anything fishy happens, then at least both our sides are close enough that they can inter intervene after a few seconds. But I want to kill you myself, Castle. And I think you want to at least get a shot at me. Okay, out of character. Does anyone know who Norton Big Hat is? <laughs> it's what Mila I... used to call Nathan back in New Laszlo. Oh, so Mila's Mila been was sending... sending messages. What because the fuck? Mila Mila doesn't understand he's a bad guy. Sure. But here's the thing. What? Why wouldn't Nora have told us? They obviously know about each other now. Yeah. I don't know. I guess you'd have to ask her. God damn it, Kriana! <laughs> Mother! <laughs> no, no. Okay. Okay. So how the fuck are we going to do this? Um. Okay, seriously? Al really doesn't care about dueling Nathan. Not anymore. Maybe he would have at one point. But it would buy you guys time to figure something out. I mean, as a player, sure. I love the idea of taking Nathan on, but I think Al's character has progressed beyond well, any things like that. Let's just say um, 
we say no. <laughs> um, ju- just just to throw that, if we do say no, um, they do have five power armors, and we're sitting in a, a fairly um, not protected against five power armors behemoth. <laughs> well, which has also taken quite a bit of damage. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if we if we were to fight at least, we might want to be outside the behemoth. So like we don't have all of our home destroyed. Um I know that doesn't matter in the future if that does happen. You know the future because we could be killed. Yeah, that, that, would, a... be, that would be that would be Um yeah. but like this this is this is our particular home and things like that. Having a duel and trying to have it resolved between just like a one on one thing might be the better of the two options. Um, yeah. We could there... definitely go another option. Um, his uh, actions have been a bit uh, suspect, and his, his mental stability seems to be a bit on the wonky side. Definitely can use that to our advantage in some facet. But uh, nothing's particularly coming to my mind at the moment. Yeah, oh, um, I... I could. Mm-hmm. I, I, I could also, if we end up doing the duel, I could try and hide myself with Chameleon, and slowly it would be a fucking mile, but slowly make my way over. For what? Know. No, I mean, if um, we're doing the duel, we can out. do the duel. That's, that's fine. Uh, no, I, I'm not I could try and help out in the duel. What I'm no, I, what I'm saying is, is if Al agrees to a duel, he'll honor it, at least. But it's just a matter of if we do it or not. Because, like, look, Al doesn't really have much interest in determining who's the better man. But he's also not going to agree to a one-on-one fight and then... No, actually, wait, it's Al. He would. Um, yeah, he would. <laughs> that's why I'm trying to say... But, but but I don't think that would be necessary. Besides that, even if you did get involved, they would get involved. The idea is to buy time, not to... Um, I think yeah. the better action would be Al accepts the duel, and then you guys furiously try and come up with a, a way out of this while Al buys as much time as possible. I also might have a few ideas that might help, but we'd have to start the duel and find out. Uh. Sorry, do you want me to intervene, or are you guys still mulling things over? I, I'm still thinking of things. I'm with Piff. I think that doing the duel is, is the best course of action. If nothing else, it gets us outside. It buys the others time to think. Brenna um, just finished eating. She said she'll be right here. So if you guys okay. want to hold off for a moment and speak with her. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. I'll run to the restroom anyway. I'll have, anyway. I'll I'll have to right. recap a few things for her. But uh, just a I'll few. be succinct. I'll be succinct. Yeah, yeah. And I have succinct. some goddamn questions for her, God. <laughs> <laughs> like, See, here, why don't I, I get I letters, was, uh, huh? <laughs> See, here I was thinking, like, you know, the whole owl helping the coalition bit them in the back. But nowhere near as much as I... As other things. I'll yeah, like if if Kriata ever like tries to go like, what? see, you shouldn't have saved him. It's like you shouldn't have sent so many freaking letters to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> let me uh, let me let me um, communicate this to Kriana first before y'all jump on her. What's up, asshole? Hey, hey. Kriana. <laughs> damn it, Kriana. <laughs> Hi, how are you? You scared me. I, I, how fucking dare you? I, <laughs> listen, it's been a long day. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. You, you only missed about 15 minutes. It's no big deal. Um, Squeeze just using the washroom. Uh, is it okay if I recap for you what happened? I think that's a fair thing to do. Okay, so um, Nathan showed up. <laughs> he <did> show up. <laughs> no. um, He is there with four other individuals in this uh-huh. Samus power armor. And uh, after a somewhat, um, not really lengthy monologue, but uh, mockingly, he, he um, 
teased or, or uh, admonished the group for assisting uh, those coalition soldiers because they were able to identify who you are, at least their general descriptions. Oh. But then oh. also said oh. that despite that, it would have slipped past his radar if he wasn't looking in the right direction. And then he took out a tattered piece of paper and he recited, Dear Norton Big Hat, oh, today no. I saw a bird. <laughs> XXOO and 13 little hearts around. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I wonder who fucking gave him that, huh? I have no explanation for this. <laughs> Did he get the picture sure. I sent him? I mean, may have sent him. <laughs> It was a picture of a big man in a hat. It yep. was a picture of him. Apparently, it was more than one. It hmm. was several. Oh, yeah. Over no. the months. Oh, trust me. Inferno and I discuss what <laughs> type of things I said to him. God damn it, Kriana. <laughs> well, no one kept tabs on me 24-7. Yep. There's actually you a couple of times. There's a couple of times where I was like, Mila goes around town. And she goes around town by herself. <laughs> Everyone's like, okay. <laughs> Here's the part that, that, that mystifies me. Obviously, my first reaction was Mila doesn't know Nathan's a bad man. I get it. But Nora knows, mm -hmm. and she knows what Mila's up to. I mean, well, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially, especially nowadays when they can change at will. <laughs> yeah, but they couldn't always do that. First I was going to say, this is more right. of a recent thing. There is a time, and I don't know if I actually brought it up, where uh, Mila was doing things out of that Nora didn't actually know. Oh, I guess I just, I, and, and that was kind of my question. I was thinking that now that they are aware of each other, I guess, well, this, I guess they might not converse occurred, very often. The, the, the notes occurred long. It was, she started doing it like, soon, mm. soon after the ambush, actually. The I suppose. Ambush. In a while. I suppose it's not a very um, commonly asked question of Nora going to Mila. Hey, Mila, did you by chance ever send letters to Nathan Heathcote? <laughs> yeah. Or Norton Big Hat in this case. I love Norton it when Big I first Hat. said it and Squeeze like, who's Norton Big Hat? And I'm like, that's what, that's what Mila used to call Nathan. And you're like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. One uh, last little bit of detail information. Uh, mm -hmm. Nathan has explained that there's no reason for him to be talking about this. He could have easily just ambushed or attacked you all right away. But what he really desires, since you're all going to die anyway, is that he really wants to know once and for all, outside the classroom, you know, outside a controlled environment, who really the best agent is. And he has challenged Al to a duel, for lack of a better word, to go head to head, toe to toe. Uh, you know, to the death fight. He has assured that his men will pull back two miles, and you guys, both he and I would fight about one mile away. So both sides are about one mile away from the main melee engagement. That way, if something fishy happens, there's enough time for both sides to intervene, but not enough to cause an instantaneous, you know, to, to cr make things fair, for lack of a better word. Hmm. Well, now we just got to find a way to sabotage that. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. definitely. So, yeah, we, you just came in when you, they were just deciding what to do next. So, yeah, the, the thought was Al doesn't really care. Like, he's he might have at one point, but Al, the way he is now, he doesn't he doesn't really care. He doesn't want to kill Nathan. But, but it is a way to buy time for everyone else to figure out things. So, and, um, it will actually, he would have to ask this and actually in front of, I'll go ahead and do this in character. Okay. Uh, he would ask over the radio, what kind of duel? What are we talking about? Well, to be honest, I'm not very comfortable in leaving my little exoskeleton suit. The reason why I'm hiding behind my current face mask, so you can't see how much I'm smiling is because, well... Various members of your group can instantaneously um, singe my face off. So, uh, if you don't mind, I'd rather do uh, some sort of high-powered weaponry. You weren't too so bad in this, Samus. And I hear that you have some flying power armor. It's not. It's an inferior quality, but it has more missiles than mine. 
It'd be fair enough. So you and your power armor and your abilities and me and my abilities. Is that what I'm hearing? Damn straight. One moment, please. <laughs> You're not going anywhere, he says. And I want you all to know that I'm savoring every second. I can feel the panic in your voice. Um, question. Guys, I've got some ideas <laughs> for question. the duel itself. Mm -hmm. Question. Um, <clears throat> so are we all on the behemoth listening to this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, We're yeah. like in the middle of a yeah. big open field. As soon as, well, just to be clear, as soon as like the name Norton Big Hat was mentioned, <laughs> yes. uh, Nora is just going to like slowly duck down. <laughs> Oh god. oh god, no, Kriana, the best part was, Inferno first said that the way Nathan found us right now was he questioned the people Al helped last yeah. session, and Al's like, he's never going to hear the end of this, oh, oh. <laughs> there was many levels why I thought your guys' little fight was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> You're both to blame. <laughs> Well, shit. Yay! <laughs> Everyone I loses. Promise, <laughs> I promise I won't dislocate your shoulder. Anyway, All right. Um, no Al would, yeah, Al would get off the radio real quick and say, "Guys, look, I really don't care about dueling him, but it'll buy us time. It'll get us out in the open, and it'll give you time to think of some way to get out of this." Is it all right if a few NPCs pipe up? Sure. Alicia, who is in the middle of getting into her body armor, body armor, says, I don't see a way for us to get out of this unless we can magic up something. These guys want to kill us. It's a fight to the death. I say we give them hell. Lee says... If we were by a ley line, I might be able to do something, but if what she says is right, I'll do everything in my power to protect us, but there's no easy way out. Al Not says, on a magic level. Al says, let me duel him. I have a few ideas. If I can make him helpless, I might be able to talk a new way out of this, but I think you're right. Al, Al nods and he says, it's not a big chance, but like I said, if I can make him helpless, it would depend on how much he values his life. Helpless? Al would nod and say, I got a few ideas. Alicia, finishing putting on the, the chest plate of her armor, says... He might have a couple ideas too, Al. I'm not gonna lie, I think we're stronger fighting together. Al would co like come back over the radio and say, "It's up to you guys. At least feigning to start the duel will allow us to get out in the open without them firing on us. But I'll be honest with you, I'd much rather fight with you guys. But I don't mind." You know what? At least saying that we're going to duel and giving the pretense of a duel, and once things go sour, everyone jumps in. I don't know. This is a tough call. Are we in the behemoth right now? Yep, you're in the behemoth. Yep. yep. <clears throat> okay. I'm just trying to get a con. I'm trying to visualize. Sure, sure. All right, Alan. I have one safety net for you if things go rough on your side. And uh, Patrick is going to uh, go into his room and come back mm -hmm. out with an empty sack that has a symbol on it. Al would, um, Al would clasp, clasp Patrick on the shoulder, nod, and say thank you. Don't want to be a killjoy. Hmm. Don't want to be a killjoy at all. Yeah. 
that backpack can be activated with someone simply holding it, right? Yeah. But due to Al's power armor, due to the wingspan and the large engines on his back, he cannot wear it like a regular backpack. No. So that means he has to have it in hand, which oh. means that might affect him using his it's... Uh, hand-to-hand weapons. All mm-hmm. right, so he can't like have it underneath. There's like not enough room in there. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a uh, go looky loo of the power armor itself, because I like to do things that are realistic. That's mm-hmm. how I. That's how I do things, right? And if we can come up with a conceivable way, then we can come up with a conceivable way. Maybe if you wore it like a fanny pack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it would Netflix. require. Here's the thing. It would require some jury rigging. Uh, and you would have to limit your speed, Al, or it might fly off. But it's feasible. What? The problem is, is there isn't a lot of storage on this thing either. I'm looking at a picture of it right now. All right. Do you guys want a picture for a reference, by the way? Yeah. Oh, I have one. Yeah. Uh, I'm, All right, I'll get everyone else so you can help out with this. Um, I, I don't really know power armors very well. Uh, I just thought it would be like kind of like a piece of cloth in his, on his back underneath the armor. Here, let me show you a picture. All right. Uh, Riftsy, Riftsy, Riftsies. Boom. Oh my! It's going to change a few things on the stream. Let me just move that. Oop, move that. Ooh, that's a sexy pose. Move I know, eh? That. <laughs> Meow. 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 Just a really unattractive meow. <laughs> There's a cat person under there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, actually, guys, that's a portrait of Al, didn't you? Uh... And now I just you vomited. You have some great tits, Al. <laughs> <laughs> some great robo tits. Some huge that's the only land. type of armor they had. So land. That would be hilarious. Al's got like a female version of the Titan flying power. Actually, I find it really interesting. I think it's because the Titan flying power armor is more one that you wear. So uh, there would be a chest bump, but most power armor and robots, like it is gender neutral. <laughs> it okay. doesn't worry about mm-hmm. someone's breasts. <laughs> I see. That That is a fairly close piece of armor. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And not only that, but the 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 engines would be coming from the back and down, so anything protruding too much from the hips might get burned. Might get right. burned. Like I said, the fanny pack idea would work. It had to be jerry rigged, and Al couldn't go beyond cruising speed, or um, he would. It would. There would be. I just roll percentile chance for it flying off. If uh, I recall correctly, I could have sworn that he had some. <clears throat> Um, leather pouch satchels. He sure did. Um, um, and those were customly made for that. But we're talking about a backpack here that wasn't made to be worn like a fanny pack, for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, can I scrunch the backpack up? Could I scrunch it up small enough to fit wait. in one of those leather pouches? Mm-hmm. So yeah. was that burn? Yeah, I, I, I was gonna actually just bring that up, and can't he just like in emergency reach in and use it? Reach in mm-hmm. with one hand, pull it out, and then use it. Mm-hmm. Or would that not work? Mm-hmm. It, it would probably take like X amount of. Of course, action. of course. It's not a question of time. I'm just trying to think of the physics of of how I visualize this leather backpack and it being able to fit inside the pouch. Yeah, that might yeah. be. You know what? Let's good. not complicate things for your ideas. I'm gonna say it can go in the pouch, but I'm gonna say that the pouch won't be able to close. All right. So there might be certain actions, uh, but for the most part, it's secure in there, all right? Uh, you s- do have to still keep in mind your speed, of course, right, and how you maneuver in the air. But uh, I'll say it's feasible. It can get scrunched down, scrunched down into that pouch without it being zipped up closed or latched closed. I, okay, I have an idea. <clears throat> Everyone's going to be a mile away, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. A mile away from each other. That's what Nathan says. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think I think I would uh, tell Patrick thank you, but taking it with me is going to slow me down, and I can't afford that. The one thing I have over his power armor is speed. 
It is true, actually. The stats of the Titan Power Armor versus the Samoth is, is that it can go a good 80 miles per hour faster. Not 80, sorry. 40 miles per hour faster than the Samoth. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Would it be feasible for Al to wear the medallion on the inside of his power armor? You mean that little silver medallion got from New Zoo? Yes. Yeah, most certainly. It's a very it's just a little medallion. Yeah, I would recommend wearing that instead. Al would nod. And uh he would say Look, starting the duel gets us out. Let's go with that, but let's think of another way. Let's just assume everything goes for the worse. What do we do? I mean, because even if I win, you know those coalition aren't going to just let us be. Oh, yeah. We're, we're just going to have to kill them. How about this? We might be able to talk some reason into them from our actions and the actions of his leader. But no, no, I was maybe. just thinking. We, we do the duel. The second the duel starts going sour, or I win, whatever the case may be, I come back to you guys. Whatever, wherever this takes place, it takes place where we want it to take place. While I'm delaying Nathan, you guys set up some line of defense, something that gives us a better chance of fighting than meeting them on open ground. All right. Lee nods. I could summon up some walls. And other such things. Yeah. Maybe maybe if I'm given enough time, I can bring in an ally or two. Tom's going to look over to Lee. What do you mean, ally or two? <clears throat> ritual. Summoning ritual. Haven't done it in years, but give me five minutes and I can bring something scary. And it won't try right. and kill us? Nope. I'll point you in the right direction. Rusty, Al but we're says, in desperate situations. Al nods and says to himself, five minutes. Got it. You know who I wish was here with all of his friends? I wish Ver was here. That he's a cool guy. Did someone say Ver? <laughs> Ver shows up on the end. <laughs> no. First through the door, Tyra. Can, can you imagine like fifty elementals in Ver? Attack, brothers! <laughs> That'd be awesome. That's Fucking. Awesome. <laughs> I don't suppose anyone That'd sees a That'd be so uniform. cool. <laughs> he was around, but um. I I yeah. want to. I still want to try. At least try. Um, do the whole chameleon and stealth my way slowly towards... But see, here, here's here's the problem with that, Burn. We're in power armor. We're probably going to be flying all over the place. Where are you going to creep to? That direction. As long as I'm slowly moving towards you guys, just in case well, something happens. As, true. As long as you're slowly moving towards us, though, you don't even need the chameleon until you're within visual yeah, sight. They... They will see me on their radar unless I have chameleon up. Radar wouldn't work, would it? Oh uh, well, it's scrubland. Um, so oh. if he's really close to the ground, probably not. Here's the thing, though. Visual, like you know, Samus Power Armor has enhanced optics. They can yeah. see a mile away. Clearly, oh, there's nothing okay. for him to really hide behind. Yeah, he can stay close to the ground. You know, be in the shrub, but. The visual distance in this field of combat is pretty damn good. Yep. Wide open field. Uh, I, I don't I don't know. Like the here's here's the only issue with that. If you miss uh okay, out of character, miss a roll, in character, mess up at all, and you're spotted, it's on. And it's on before we're prepared. I guess. And, and, I mean, what about you guys? Do you think... Because, I mean, I like the idea. I think it's just if he messes up and they spot him, if you guys were trying to prepare for something, your time is now gone. But if you don't need to prepare or if maybe he starts doing this after you've prepared, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Though, if they can see a mile away... I just realized, if they can see a mile away... And for your chameleon to work, you have to move that slowly. You're never going to reach us in time. 
Yeah, what probably. was it, like six feet per melee round? Something um, like that, six feet per action for, or something like that? For a good, um, a good one is two feet per melee or slower. Yeah, you, we're a mile away. True, but... Uh, How, what's the maximum range on any of your abilities? 1,200 feet, but I... I still would like to at least exit the behemoth chameleon and walking very slowly so that they miscount our numbers. That's cool. I like that idea. I mean, even if I can't sneakily, you know, get my way over there, at least we can miscount our numbers and I'll just hide behind the behemoth and mm -hmm. wait and watch. Okay. All right. So, um... You hear a brap of uh, a railgun being fired into the air as the radio picks up again. Did I lose you? Did you all shit yourselves? What do you say, Castle? Come on, I know you want this. I sure as hell do. I'll get back on the radio and say, Nathan, you don't know anything about me. Sure. Fine. You and me. Your abilities, my abilities. Let's see who's more macho. <laughs> and you hear, you, you hear the large engines of this power armor, of the five sets of power armor power up as they hover into the air. As Nathan will be say, I'll see you soon. Of course, I'd say don't try anything tricky or we'll kill you, but I guess that's the whole fucking point, he says. As true to his word, he you can see on the on both visually and on the radar that him and his men are moving out a mile away. All right. Um... I guess we should do the same. Okay, part. so what I'm going to do, if it's okay by you guys, is I'm going to allow you guys, for lack of a better word, some prep time. So what we'll do is I'll ask, just ask each of you what you'll be doing um, between the time of Al going to, for lack of a better word, the fighting area. All right? And then once he gets to the fighting area and the people start to throw down, then we'll roll into initiative. Sound fair? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, now let's assume that Al isn't going to just race to the area before everyone's ready. But suffice to say, Nathan is Nathan. And if you guys probably take more than five minutes or so, there might be some sort of consequences. So I'll say I'll give you guys worth of five minutes of prep time before something happens, I guess, and Al isn't there. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to, to think about what you'd like to do and how do you like to prepare yourselves or what you want to get yourselves into or where you want to move or anything like that. And then we'll then I'll go around the table, virtual table, for lack of a better word, and ask what you do, and we'll move on. And in the meantime, I'm going to prepare the initiative sheet. I don't know what we should do. <sighs> I think we're fucked. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, really? Not completely oh, really now. fucked. <laughs> yeah. Just a wee little bit. Well, I think Al's a goner, so we can use him as a sacrifice. Um, <laughs> That's true. Let's do the gods. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I like Al as a character, but, you know, gotta move on. All right, so, what's the plan, Sam? I'm making Tiny Wrath next. <laughs> it's already real. Right. Um... I don't know. Okay, so we've got a few minutes to prepare. I do. Uh, is everyone kind of on board with the idea of setting up some type of defense and drawing everyone to it? Uh, when things go crooked, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So what would we do? Lee said he can prepare a ritual. I don't know if we can hold out five minutes, but it's definitely worth trying. How um. <clears throat> How how much space does he need to prepare the ritual? Like, um, it's going to be pretty obvious we're we're cooking something up. 
Um, actually, uh, Lee says he could do it on the roof of the behemoth, but it would be more effective if he had the earth to his feet. He doesn't need a very large region, only about 30 feet square. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, uh, I'll let you know what um, NPCs are prepared to do. Um, August is about to fucking faint. Uh, you hear oh. words of, what have I gotten myself into, and oh god, oh god. As for the more, um, well, let's say for lack of a better word, uh, courageous members, uh, Alicia is um, willing to go wherever and whenever. Uh, she can go onto the turret on top of the behemoth, use the railgun there. Um, she can help defend Lee. She can go all, all out and fight. Bear has suggested... Uh, he's currently right now thinking of ambush tactics. Um, since they're flying enemies and there's not a lot of cover, it's a little tricky. But he's thinking of lining up an area in which to lure them into uh, and try to constrain them as easy or as difficult as that might be. So he's postulating those ideas. And uh, Pamel is just being a trooper. Um, Patrick is most likely going to be getting his good old water orb using his one-time use day thing for his bag because um, well defense usually the ice block worked pretty well last time and concealment might be pretty good um, and he's also probably going to bring along some mushrooms on hand. Okay. Oh my gosh, we can use the, uh, while Lee does the ritual, we can use the orb to put up ice walls that are mega damage. Yep. There we go. So we could give everyone at least partial cover. Like, you know, the idea of they're shooting from behind an ice wall or something. Okay, okay. Um, so like, like I said before, I have the mystic power armor. I'm going to bring the fire sword and a vibro sword and Ooh. have the claw bracers on it. Hmm? And I was going to say, Nora and Mila should take our new magic weapon that is pretty badass. Which fire? Uh, yeah, yeah. Which fire? Uh, it's a club that has the ability to uh, shoot forth a fire blade of badassness um if you want the stats are in the griff's group loot um under, let me direct you it's under group magical items at the very bottom oh okay do you need a link to the document or do you got that Kriana face i got it i sweet. get it sweet by the way Kriana, uh, i just want you to know that uh, i looked over your character sheet i know you're you're still leveling her up but uh, you now have at least six attacks per melee, so oh, I, I've nice. adjusted that. Jesus. We'll we'll get into the details a little bit later on, and we'll double check. I think you actually might have one or two more, but for now, I, I think uh, a six is is fair enough. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, huh. I, oops, I forgot about that. It's okay. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I understand. It, it's really easy to forget about stuff like that. It's a complicated level up system. Well, not that complicated, but still. It's pretty anyway, so simple. I, yeah. yeah. Just need to add numbers, basically. Yep. Inferno? Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, ignoring for the for the moment the second that, uh, the idea that Nathan might have custom power armor, what are the Samus's main forms of offense? Uh, that you know. It has two missiles, too many missiles in its left arm. And it has its railgun, which can do 1d10, sorry, 1d4 times 10 mega damage. Fires and okay. bursts. And this is an important part for power armor. While power oh, armor it? is motion assist, if you can't move your arm, can you still move that arm of the power armor? Uh, no, it's an exoskeleton. Okay. Just trying to see what all my options are. And reading a couple things. Uh huh. Can, does that go through power armor? I don't think. That's it does. what I was wondering. Actually, I'm <laughs> trying to I think, read. I think if you read in the description, it'll say it won't work in power armor. But we'll 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 let the description speak for itself. 
Cannot affect any inside vehicle power armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Will not. Good. Good thing I read that description. Yeah. Well, you just would have been disappointed in combat, and then you would have swore. Yeah. No, you wouldn't have swore because you're. I would have wasted my already limited. No, I wouldn't have uh, let you cast the spell. I would have been. Oh, okay, jealous. okay. I would have been. Jealous. I would have swore for Squee. Ha <laughs> ha. There we go. Um. All right. Uh. So. Um. Do you still guys want to talk about specifically what you want to do, or would you like me to go around the table and see and see what your preparation, your five minute preparation is? No, I. I, I think this is going to happen. Um, we should just to do it. Let's just roll. Okay. Yeah. Let Let's just get this get this started and okay. start wait, 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 saying wait, what our preparations are. Okay. I was gonna say yeah. We don't want to strategize or no 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 that. Got it. No no. no I'm with we you. We can I'm with strategize. You but he just I'm... Burn just wants to get the ball rolling, and I understand yes, that. Yeah. So uh, I'm you with guys you guys can always meta game talking about details. It's all good. So let's start from uh, the top. All right. Well, the top of this little list that I have here. So, Al, uh, what would Al be doing in these in these about five minutes or so as he makes his way towards Nathan? By the way, you can also notice on the radar that sure enough, one blip is one mile away, and you can kind of see him before, and you can see far, far, far off into the distance, and your radar confirms it that um, the other blips are approximately a mile away. They might be about 100 feet or so closer, but not by any huge discernible distance. Okay. I mean, like um, a mile. So they, they're like two miles away from you. Right. Just under two miles away from you. Um... I think Al would just be kind of playing out a hundred different scenarios in his head. Okay. Um, and then maintaining contact with everyone through the radio in case they have any last minute instructions or anything. He would probably say something like, um, he'd apologize for bringing this on everyone again. But other than that, mm-hmm. now he'd just be slowly walking towards Nathan. Patrick, what would Patrick like to do in these five minutes or so? Once again, utilize any NPCs that you like. <sighs> um, Patrick is just getting ready for any sort of sh- shenanigans that the opponent might be getting and uh, stocking up on all of his uh, equipment, making sure that he has his uh, important items on hand. Okay. Uh, what armor are you wearing? Is it your golden armor? Yes. Okay. And now, just to be clear, you are wearing that little thin silver medall- medallion uh, given to you by New Zood, correct? Yes. Do right. I have to... Do we know... Is it something I have to activate, or is it... Um... You don't know yet. You guys we have really absolutely no idea. With, so. All right, then. But I'm wearing it. Yep. You do know in back in New Zoot shot, um, he had, I believe it was Tom or Al wear it, and he zapped you with the little glove, and you worked out okay, so it does that at least. It prevents Got it. glove zaps. Anyway, uh, anything else, Patrick? Are you going to be inside the behemoth, outside the behemoth? Outside the behemoth. I'd, okay. I, I, yeah, he's going to be outside. Okay. Tom. Um, question. If I recall correctly, Alicia was going to go to the gunner seat at the top of the observation deck? She's willing to do that. She mentions that since these little fuckers like to fly around and that the top of the behemoth, the little turret that she'd be in, offers some protection, it'd be a good place, and she knows her way around a railgun. It'd be a good place for her. However, if you can think of a better place for her, she's willing to fight tooth and nail for you guys. So her position is flexible. I I like the idea of getting her up there. Um, is there an easy way for me to get up there? Uh, it depends on defining easy, but considering that your armor can fly, I'd say yes. Well, I was thinking like going up the ladder and then just sitting on the top of the behemoth while in chameleon sure that's no problem as long as you go first yeah i'll I'll do that going very slowly okay all right no problem 
You got five minutes, so you're able to do so in five minutes. Get on top of the behemoth. How far away from Alicia would you like to be, approximately, in feet? Um, I think 100 is more than enough. Okay, well, uh, I don't know if the behemoth is more than 100 feet long, but yeah, that's it's okay. not. It's 60 feet, never mind. Yeah. Um, I'll go 20 feet. Okay, and uh, ahead of her or behind her? Um, towards the back cargo bay. Okay, great. Awesome. Uh, so that's Tom. Nathan, what would you like to do? I like to kill them, Inferno. Okay, well, good luck, dude. Uh, Alicia already said what she wanted to do. Samus soldiers are hanging back. Mila. I... <laughs> God damn it. Tiny Wrath. Tiny Wrath. <laughs> are you going to fight these humans? You are Tiny Wrath. <laughs> Hi, oh, I'm, uh, what? sorry guys, I don't know, I just had something in my throat there, um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I will be getting my, I guess my Power Ranger armor on. Okay, great. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm just looking at the stupid notes I left for myself on here. Um, <laughs> they're not stupid, they're your own. Give Inferno shit, Inferno 2015. You um, woo! Okay, uh, and, um... I guess I have this this witch fire thing. Uh, up to your choice, too. Uh, you probably have enough room to have both your, your dragon-plated hammer and witch fire if you really wanted. Okay. And, um, yeah, and if anything, she'd be kind of trying to monitor uh, Lee. Okay, great. Speaking of Lee, um, he'll get to an area. Uh, this is just of his own volition. Feel free to nudge him somewhere else but he figures if he's directly behind the behemoth that will kind of block line of sight of least where the soldiers are currently they probably won't be able to see what he's doing hmm. yeah so, I like that idea so yeah. he says he can probably bring up uh, a wall but uh, he can get started on the ritual real quick in fact um he makes haste and makes preparations, and it takes him about a minute and a half. But if you guys like, he can be like three and a half minutes already into this ritual, which means Al would only have to fight for a minute and 30 seconds. I like this I, idea. I like yeah, that idea. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Fine with me. Um, right. uh, also, I'm so sorry. Before I forget, can I load out my wings with all plasma? Of course. Thank you. No sorry. problem, man. I'm, no, I'm flexible with this. Yeah, what up? If I have time... Mm -hmm. I I'm, think you would. I'm going to hand um, Lee a um, a large vial with a dragon bone in it and ask if he needs this and would help. He goes, different rituals, but uh, I won't need it for now. All I need is just earth and salt. And I nabbed all the salt we could from the behemoth already. Okay. Put that back. Okay. All right. Um, would you like Bear um, by Nora and Lee to offer offer protection for the ritual as well? Um. Yeah. Okay. I like that idea. Oh. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Okay. All right. Bear, uh, you've noticed, has gotten really, really low into the scrub itself. Um, he's blind blending himself in pretty darn well. Um, Nora, you would know this back from your uh, long, long history with the with the Wolfen. Um, he is he's doing his hiding thing, and uh, he's pretty skilled at it. So. If you didn't know, knew exactly where it was, give him a few minutes and he'll blend right out of sight. Cool. cool. Yeah. All right. So, any last minute stuff, or shall we get this party started? I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Okay. So, 